The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, my name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and All Other Sports. Tonight, I got a very special guest, wrestling fan Anthony Miller, also known as Squeaks. Thanks for coming on, Anthony. Glad to be here. Awesome. We're going to just talk wrestling. Let's get right into it. Um, you have been one of Chaotic Wrestling's biggest fans, in my opinion, because like I said, that's where I met you. Um, they did something incredibly nice for you and your family as you guys were going through a, a terrible situation. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. A few years back when I was in high school, uh, there was a, a fire which engulfed the apartment building in which my parents and I lived in. Right. I pretty much watched it burn down at school, <sighs> which was heartbreaking. But my teacher, Mr. Parsons, was cracking jokes Trying to keep it light. Yeah. But it was like right near the end of the day. Went to go to the bus. Got stopped by security. to let me know what happened. Right. But I already knew what happened. Right, right. And then, you know, stayed to my sisters for a few weeks. Then I went, still went to the next Chaotic show. Right. Not skipping it. And they did something pretty amazing for me. One of the most amazing things that anyone has done for me. Absolutely. I mean, they came out and they gave you all kinds. They gave you some clothes. They gave you all the t-shirts, yeah. the backpack filled with DVDs. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. Chase came out. Um, Casey Ray gave you guys a check for $1,400. I still have that check. Do you? And, and all the um, eight by tens I got that night with the personal messages signed. Nice. I have them all hanging. And one of the, one of the most coolest things is Alex Arion. Yeah. Gave me an eight by ten, and I have haven't seen him wrestle around that around then for a while. Right. So it was just like, wow! I never knew this. I never knew he was still, you know, within chaotic. Right. Alex, great. A lot of people say the best unsigned talent to ever come out of New England. Oh yeah. You know, he's definitely up there. I told you a minute ago off air about the first Ring of Honor show I went to. Yeah. And Maverick Wild wrestled Alex Ari on that night. And it was pretty awesome because I was pumped. I think, I'm not sure if I ever seen Maverick w Wild wrestle before. But, right. But I heard a lot of great things about him. Yeah, you know, he's a great guy. He was a great worker. He worked for WCW. He told a great story here about wrestling Kevin Sullivan. But we can talk about it after because this is all about you. Fan questions. Joey Kilmartin wants to know, what was your introduction to chaotic wrestling? Ooh, my introduction was I would watch them on YouTube, but I wouldn't go to any other shows at that time besides Liberty States or MWF back in Melrose. Right. So I'd watch the shows and be amazed by it. And then one day I asked my dad, hey, can we go to a show in Woburn? He's like, sure, let's go. I went and the only match I remember now was Gino Martino fighting one of the Logan brothers. I don't want to get it right, wrong. Right, right. But it was a Halloween street fight. And it was one of the most hardcore matches I've ever seen. Nice. They, they could have, that could have even been Nick. He was wrestling back then. I think you know? so. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember when all three of them were going at it. And he opened up that uh, uh, amateur wrestling place that, in Lowell. Like the Doughboy Wrestling Camp or something like that. I don't know what the exact name. Sorry. But he's doing great things. So, um, all right. Dave Fornia, you go to all the chaotic shows. Are there any other promotions you go to? And you do go to some. You just mentioned a couple that you used to go to because Liberty States don't run no more. Right, right. The Ice used to go to Beyond a bunch of times yep. when I could make their shows when they would run Sunday shows. Right. Like around in Melrose. Yep. But once they started doing other days like Saturday shows or going back to Jersey or wherever they'd be, I would watch them on their website. Nice. And now I, you, you are, um, do you have IWTV? I do. Yes. Do you, I, I, sh I should get it. I got high spots network. I think I'm going to drop it and get that one. I want to try out the IWTV. 
See, for me, IWTV is perfect yeah. because I'm I fell in love with ICW. Yeah. They are uh, no holds barred. They do a bunch of deathmatch wrestling, and nice. I'm I'm into that. You know, right. I'm well rounded where I like traditional wrestling, submission, and I like hardcore. Right. I do like, I, I like death matches too. Um, is that the one that Danny DeManto might be a part of? I yes. know he's part of G Game Changer too. But no, Wait, but Danny? ICW, Ooh. it's, I know Jack, ah, uh, what's his name? Ah, uh, the masked maniac used to run a, 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 IC, a IWC or ICW yeah. in New York. Yeah, I, th I, I, I think, think that's the one. I think it's the same company. So. I think I just I'm not <laughs> I'm not as you know as faithful to ICW, but I do try to watch all their pit fighters and everything. Yeah, and they just go through hell. Yeah, Dan, Dan Moff was in one of the pit fighter matches I think a few shows ago, and I my jaw was on the floor. Right, he's insane. Yeah, he's and he's strong as an ox, man. And actually, he's one of my favorites. And and when remember the last time he wrestled in Lowell for Chaotic. Yeah, yeah. I never hang around after the shows, but I like, I, I'm like, I told, I was with Sonny that, and I'm like, we ain't going anywhere yet. So I seen somebody, I don't even know who it was, came walking by, but I knew they worked for Chaotic. I stopped them and said, hey, can you go in there and ask Dan Moff if he can come out and say hi? Just tell him Leo's out here. Because he was part of that roster when I catered. Yeah, yeah. So I knew I had a relationship. Plus, on Facebook, everybody knows who everybody is now, you know? Yeah. But what a great guy. Crazy, crazy strong. Um, so any, uh, those are the companies pretty much. You still go to MWF if they run in Melrose. Yeah. Cause they're supposed to run again soon. I heard. I, I hope so. I yeah. just hope the sh you know, the shows that happen run within my schedule. Right. Right. I think I saw you at the last time I went to beyond at Melrose. It was the same yep. night Evolve wrestled in yep. the building that night, but I only went to the afternoon. I saw you guys there. That was one of the weirdest shows I've been. I didn't understand that show. I it wasn't the greatest show. Well, you're talking about the Beyond one, right? Right. Yeah. I didn't think it was the greatest show. I think what they're, I think, this is what I heard, you know, through the grapevine yeah. of fans, that it was a parody show of what they could be. Right. But I was just, by the end, that was one of the, you know, all talent, but that was one of the least entertaining shows I've been to. And, and I agree with you because I was there. And I had heard that it could have been shot for a pilot too, a TV pilot. Yeah. So some people that were scheduled to wrestle that day had, had been wrestling for bigger companies of that. They said, you can't wrestle if it's TV. Yeah. So that's why we got what we got, I think. Huh. Because they went to lower tier wrestlers because you don't yeah. have to worry about them working for ROH on the side. Not signed, but yeah. those companies don't want talent working anywhere else. Yeah, I've seen that happen a few times, like different promotions. Right. Like I remember um, Liberty States took Matt Taven, but he couldn't wrestle or do anything on the show. Were, right. were you there for that? No, I, I only went to one Liberty States. That's just because I had issues with Todd. Yeah. Soap of the owner, which neither here nor there, nothing for nothing. But the guy ran a good company and he had a great fan base for his company. I will say that, you know? Yeah. His promotion was the first wrestling show I've ever been to. Nice. And the main event was Matt Taven versus Todd Sopel in a steel cage. Nice. And that was the first time security ever told me to back up from the action. Oh, which, you know, ha which has happened quite a bit, I think, over the years. Yeah, I've, I, I've gotten smarter. <laughs> right. Um, but one show, it was a UFO show. Right. There was a wrestler. I forget his name now. But he wrestled Derek Dukes, I believe, that night. My He's old co-host? Yeah. Wow. And, you know, I knew Derek. Yep. So I'm like, I was, you know. A lot stupider back then. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know Derek. This guy got in my face, and he was, you know, swearing in my right, face. Right. And you know, I'm like, okay, he dared me to get in the ring. And you know, no, you yeah. did. Yes, I oh, jumped on the apron. No, I jumped on the apron, and that was the look Derek Duke had. He's like, yeah. And then it clicked. Right. I'm like, I, but you know. I was stupid, yes, but then I figured this is like, you know, I thought it was a PG show. Right, this guy right. is, you know, calling me this and that. And, you know, I'm like, okay, there's kids around. He's swearing. So I'm like, Derek Dukes is trying to, you know, get one up. No, no. I jumped off the apron, <sighs> sat back down, you know, was like, I'm sorry. Apologized yep. to the wrestler. You know, he threatened, you know, to kick my ass. Right. And I'm like, you know, I, okay. 
But, you know, I'm 15. I'm sorry. Right. right. You know, I you was get still, carried away. Yeah. Since then, I know the fine line now where right. to draw. Yep. But I've seen some fans cross the line. I have to. You know, and you know what's sad? I used to see wrestlers and people that are in the business, not technically wrestlers, yeah. go to Ring of Honor shows and act like I would never act. Like, <sighs> I could be hammered out of my mind and I wouldn't act as disrespectful as some people in the business have done in front of me. It's just, I remember someone a, a while back, you know, uh, punched Casanova in the arm from behind me. Right. It was um, my friend Allison and my friend Mike, and he punched Casanova and then ducked. Right. So, you know, Casanova turned around and I'm like, it ain't me, you know that. Right. He just ran that way. Wow. I'll tell you, we were at, um, I want to say, it might have been Andover or Haverhill at the high school. And I was with my grandson and we're sitting there. And when the show was over, mm -hmm. we're driving home. My grandson said that there were some kids behind us. It was the, the Cold Fury show where Killanova took on um, the Mill City Hooligans, the first match. Remember that night? Yeah, yeah. So when we were leaving, my grandson said, uh, Poppy, it was really bad. I said, why? He goes, when Christian was wrestling, somebody said the N-word about him, right? I'm like, why didn't you tell me, right? Because it bothered him, Yeah, you know? And he, I'm like, why didn't you tell me then? We would have had them guys escorted out of the building. Yeah. There's no, no need for that. No, you know? no, 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 no. But, um, but like, the, again, disrespectful fans, right? I mean. And you see the thing that I see for like chaotic and, right. you know, tight knit organizations. If fans see it, you know, you'll say something, we'll say something. Right. Because you know what? We, we don't take that crap, especially for the roster. Because yep. we all, all of us are a family. Yes. Independent family. Absolutely. And, and, and it's nice because the wrestlers are so approachable now. Oh, too, yeah. Compared to when I started going to independent shows, some were approachable and some weren't. But now they all come out now. Yes. You know, back in the day, they didn't all come out and sell their shirts and stuff like that. They just didn't, you know. Um, all right, let's get back to the question. Dave's got another one. If you could book any one match, what would it be and why? And can I ask you something? Would New Jack be in it? Now that you mention it, yeah, New Jack would be in it. New Jack is, you know, one of my favorite, you know, one of my favorite wrestlers because I have him from everywhere. Because, you know, I'm going to say this, hopefully he doesn't wrestle me anytime soon, but he's not like a wrestler, I would say, that could do a moonsault. Right, and, right, you know, right. But he knows how to work a crowd. Big time. And that's one of the one things you need to do is work the crowd. Yep. You can do, you know, four 360s, but if the crowd doesn't feel it, Yep. I think New Jack wouldn't get that mad if he heard that because you call, you followed it up with a compliment. Nah, we definitely don't want to <laughs> upset New Jack. Oh, no, no. That's for sure. But I heard New Jack's coming. To, I, sorry, guys, you see me pointing over here. Anthony's father, James, is sitting in here. So I just want, you know, um, what was I saying? Who were you talking about? New Jack. New Jack. He's wrestling for uh, Jimmy um, Trooper Gilmore, uh, James Allen, New World Wrestling Extreme in Rhode Island. Okay, I'll yeah, try yeah. to share the show with you because I, I don't know, Troop. Am I still catering your shows? I've been catering the last three, so oh, yeah, I've really same seen deal. You post that. If you want it, um, but yeah. So who would New Jack be wrestling? Oh, uh, who else would be in the match? I'm gonna do a unique one because yeah. we talked about him earlier. I would book a return of Gino Martino. Oh yeah, because I remember seeing a photo he shared. I remember he had one of the only, I want to say, death matches Chaotic ever had. Right. And you know me being a diehard Chaotic fan and being a death match fan, I would love to see him fight New right. Jack. Yeah, that I, would be incredible. I love Gino too. Oh, he was amazing. And a great guy, and a lot of great things have happened to him over the years with the uh, superpower things, you know? Like, yeah. he's got the thickest skull in the world and stuff. But couldn't happen to a nicer guy. No, he was amazing. Like, yeah. Uh, I remember back at Lowell PAVs, you know, they were my favorite tag team going in there, and I would message him, talk to him and Poe, you yep. know, ask him about shows. And I remember one time he couldn't make it, and I was bummed. I was like, oh, I thought you were going to show up. Right. He's, he was like, don't worry, next show, well, we're going to be there and just watch what happens. And, you know, it pretty much ended with them kicking the Logan's asses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Him and Ali Muhammad, was it? Oh. 
I think I think he was with uh, John Poe. Oh, John Poe. All right. Yeah, you said that. Hello, Leo. But yeah, John Poe's a big dude, too. He's insane. Insane. It was nice to see him. He came back for a while and went to was wrestling at APW. Yeah, I remember he was the world champion. Yeah, so I'd love to see him come back. Um, they ran that one show in, in New Hampshire. Did you happen to go to the, the show they ran in Derry? For our Liberty Seats? It, no, for no. um for the other one I just said. Ah. Um no. No. All right. All right, let's go to the next question. Um why do you hate Elias so much? And that's Dave's last question. All right, this one's a funny one. All right. I normally bring my dad to shows, but I, I brought this girl for my job. She wasn't into wrestling. She's like, you're not gonna like, like I'm not gonna like it. I'm like, come on, come to the show. I brought her to the show. She became a diehard Ilya fan. Wow. And I'm like, okay. So I started turning. So I was already booing Ilya, but right. now I'm like, she's cheering for him. I'm booing against him. So we have to get louder and louder. Right. And then finally it just ran with it. I just, you know, started making my own shoot promos on him. <laughs> and it was just, it was gaining traction, I guess. <laughs> right. Because I remember they were pushing him as a baby face, and I didn't care. I cheer for, I was cheering for the heels. So I was going for Chase. Yep. He won. Yeah. He runs the place. Yeah. Really does now. Oh, yeah. Which is fantastic. I know you must be happy about that. Seriously, because you've known him a long happy. time. Yeah. I figured he had, I, when the company switched from Jamie, I figured yeah. he had something to do with it. Whether or not he did doesn't matter now, because now he runs it. Right. But I... He'd be one of the very few people, in my opinion, that'd be a perfect example to run this school and chaotic. Absolutely. He, I thought it was them, but then when they named it to be Fury, yeah. I said, well, that makes sense too. Yeah, because he you owned know? the school. Right, exactly. Um, all right, and we talked off here. I'll just say my little bit about Ilya. He's talented in the ring. He's always in good shape, but for some reason, he does nothing for me. And someday I'm going to have him in that chair, I hope. I hope I didn't just ruin getting him by saying that. Because there's nothing personal. It's nothing against his work. I don't know what it is, man. I just don't know what it is. You hate him, and I go have a cigarette when he comes out. So, I don't know, Ilya. Let's see if you can change our opinion of you down the line. All right, Jerry Lane. And this is a good question. Um, Stephen Page said it was going to be an easy answer. What is your favorite chaotic venue? The Lowell PAV. I think that's what Stephen was saying too. And for me, it was, it's another reason that goes back to hardcore wrestling. Cause you know, I never, you would see people actually get hit with keyboards and Kendo right. six. They would always cram those shows at the Lowell PAV. And I remember one of the craziest matches that happened there was my favorite back then, Dijak taken on Chase Del Monte. In the last man standing match. Nice. I remember Dijak, he was just busted open. Right. It was crazy. He did not win. You know, the win had to go to Chase. Yeah. In fact, I don't think Dijak ever beat Ch Do you think? I don't think so. I don't know. I think you might be right on that. So I remember a bunch of times I'd be like cheering for Dijak. Right. And you know, oh, he just got taken out again. So <laughs> next time. Yep. Incredible wrestler, Dijak. I, and I'm not happy with how they're using him on, on Rob Not Obviously, I wish he could have just been yeah. Donovan, Dijakovic, whatever. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of T-Bar. I, I don't know. It's weird that they changed his name, but it's I have a cool backstory to it. Okay. But as far as now, I like how he, they're still not making him job, in my opinion. Right. I use that word. Right. Like, they're still yep. making him a menace. Right. But I, when he was Donovan Dijak, Donovan Dijakovic back in NXT, yep. I got his ring jacket I and saw that. knee pads. And what makes the story sweeter is that all the proceeds for that went to Ricochet's family that also had a house fire. Wow. So I'm like, no kidding. Right. Well, what better for me, you know, yeah. to give back to someone else in need that was in the same position as me. Right. Paying so, it forward. Exactly. That's awesome. And Dijak's a good dude, man. I, I, you know what I mean? He has some weird... You on Twitter? I am on Twitter. Well, he has some weird tweets once in a while. He deletes a lot of tweets. You know? I see <laughs> that. And I'm like... Sometimes I'm like, can he say that? And I'm right? like, it's gone. And I'm like, well, we'll find out on Monday. 
<laughs> well, and I agree. The PAV was my favorite place to see a, uh, to see a KR show. I used to also like going to the Lollouts when they had them there. Um, and obviously, Wuben, you know, when you got to see Bob. Yeah, Bob. Bob. You know what I mean? They, that was just the best. But Lowell, because of that, the atmosphere in that building, because they would pack. I guarantee if the fire department would have came, there would have definitely been too many people in that building. I remember. I'm telling you. Yeah, I remember hearing one time at at a show. I remember hearing it from a fan. Yep. But, you know, no one official. Right. That, that we were over the uh, capacity one time. Oh, I guarantee you, they must have been over the capacity every time because that place was packed, and that's oh. what made it so great to see a show. Exactly. You know, because the crowd would be crazy. That was a great building. All right. I have a few questions. Okay. Do you have any fun stories of meeting certain wrestlers? You told me one about the Sandman. You can tell that one again, or if you have another one that you want to tell. I'll, I'll tell the one with the Sandman. That's funny. See, <laughs> a lot of people have, you know, bad stories with ECW guys, but they, they were amazing to me. The Sandman was awesome. He, he was talking to me for a few minutes, and we were going to pose for a photo. I had the belt. He signed it. My dad was getting ready to take the photo. He took it. He hit the wrong button. You know, Sandman, okay, let's try it again. Two, three, four times. Sandman starts to get a little bit annoyed, but still amazing. My dad finally gets the photo, and he's like, good thing. I thought we were going to have someone else have to take the photo. But, <laughs> but he was just cool. You know, he was, a, a lot of other guys I figured would be like, come on, kid, hurry it up. You know, right, yeah, yeah. They're all amazing. New Jack, his autograph came out perfect at the show with the Sandman. It was a, um, sorry that I'm going off, but it was. No, a, please, that's what the show's about. I go off all the time. It was a ECW re reunion show, and all those guys were great to talk to. Right. But, um. Where was that show? Just it by was, chance. Was it, was it local? No, uh, well, it, uh, maybe for you, it was in Lynn. Oh, okay. Lynn. Yeah, I live in New Hampshire, but. Okay. But, yeah, that's local. Um. Was well, that yeah. the big time? I, it was the big time wrestling show, right? When they yep. did the ECW. Yep. I remember that night. I didn't. I wanted to go, but I didn't go that night. For me, it was better meeting them than right. it was for the actual show. They they put on a tremendous show, but it went like that, yeah, right? And it, it was just it was crazy. It was a bittersweet moment, you know, seeing the wrestlers and seeing how some of them went through hell. Yeah, yeah, they really have Perry Saturn. Yeah, I mean, guy got addicted to meth. It doesn't get much, you know, tough times than that, man. Yeah. You know? And I, and to be honest with you, he was one of my favorite wrestlers because my favorite tag team of all time were the Eliminators. You know, obviously they're local. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But, I mean, I love them more than the Road Warriors, more than the Freebirds, more than anybody. You know? Um, all right. Who has been your favorite to me? My favorite. Ooh, I would have to say, I mean, I guess, you know, casting over, you know, could yep. kind of group it in with the killing over guys because, yep. you know, we've been seeing them so many times and every time it's, you know, they talk to me for a few minutes. Yes. You know, that that's the one good thing. You know, all the guys that I meet pretty much have been this way where, right. you know, they'd see me and they'd talk to me. I mean, o uh, only look and Biff Busick yeah. at an NXT show. Saw me in the crowd, hopped the barricade, posed a picture with me. No kidding. I had no idea he knew who I was. I, I wasn't at that. I don't think I was at that show because I'd never seen him jump out. I was I went to a couple of NXT shows in Lowell. Yeah. And he I actually called him out as he was going into the bus after oh, the yeah. show. And he came right over. He, again, didn't yeah. know my name, but remembered me from shows, thanked me for coming out and stuff. He's a great guy. Oh, he's amazing. But I isn't it crazy how, yeah. you know, they don't know our names, but like, hey, I remember you. Yep. They definitely know you. Um, they had to have been a jerk or two. CM Punk was mine. Just so I'll throw it out so you won't feel bad about saying something bad about somebody. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. No one? I mean. That's good. Because Carrie Silken was a jerk to me. I mean, I don't think I, I don't know. I mean, I've had a few autographs where they'd sign an 8 by 10 that was black and a black Sharpie. But, yeah, like but not think, caring yeah. about, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say a few names, but, you know. You right. Know, Tommaso Ciampa did that once. Wow, no kidding. And we get to look inside it and I was like, 
I was like a few feet away because I'm like, oh, he signed it. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to go back. I'm like, right, right. I framed it still. You know, I, I know he didn't mean to. Right. A few other shows I met him. He was amazing. I saw him at the Evolve show that they just had um, early last year. Yep. He's he's awesome. Right, right. He, he's still, you know, a, every time I meet him, I, I go say hi. He remembers me. Did you see him? I don't know if you were, had been going to the chaotic shows when he was Thomas Penmanship. Uh, the first time or the second time? I, the, I, probably the first time, but you, he, I didn't realize he came back a second time as mm -hmm. Thomas Penmanship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. Um, with the ruffled shirt. Yeah, and yeah. The pen with the feather. It as struck a pen, whatever. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> he it was that struck me as weird. Cause I never knew him as that. Right. And then I remember this was one of the shows where he was on a losing streak, and he called um, a mystery opponent out. It was Psycho. Oh, nice. And Psycho beat him, and I think record time. Yeah. And he snapped. I think he took out the security guards, this and that. And I'm thinking, okay, he's going to come back crazier than ever. Right. He did. He came out with, with the floral shirt, with the pen, with the pink glasses. And I'm like, nice. He snapped. Nice. Were you at the NXT show when Samoa Joe won the title? I was. I was, too. That, that place was crazy. Remember when Biff wrestled Tommaso and they yes. came out that that place was loud it one was, of the biggest pops I heard in that building that wasn't WWE because right. I've been in that building for WWE yeah 50 times at least over the years it, I remember that, that that night was insane my, my dad made a bet with me that uh, Samoa Joe was gonna win I'm like there's no way he's gonna right. win all of a sudden you know he puts him up for the muscle buster the whole crowd stands up unreal it was insane. And I definitely didn't think he was going to win the title that night. Right. You know, because it's a house show. Right? Yeah. Like, and then I, I'm, I'm dying. They had like a, a, a cardboard thing of the whole show. Yeah, yeah. And they were selling them for 15 bucks. Or you could buy the one that everybody signed for 30. And I was too cheap that night. I regret not buying that one. You and me both. You bought that $15 one too? Oh, no, I, I didn't buy any because oh. I was like, oh, it's just going to be a live show. Right. And then I'm like, oh, well, you know, Smojo won, Champa fought Biff. I'm right. like, this card was perfect to get signed. But, you know, I got the uh, plaque that showed Joe winning it. Nice. Because that was still that was still one of the biggest pops I've ever been to. Oh, absolutely. And Samoa Joe's an awesome guy. Another oh, yeah. guy that I got to know through the catering things. You know what I mean? Like all those guys from early ring, but the, all of them were great guys. And everything I got to see them do after, they should have brought Joe over 10 years ago. I mean, oh, they, yeah. they took forever to take him in. It looks like he's going to be doing well with the commentary, too. So that's good. So when his in-ring career is completely over, yeah, he's got a place to stay and work, you know? Yeah, th that scenario kind of reminds me of Taz, how he was wrestling and yes. then he became an announcer. So it, it has been done and Joe yep. can do it. He's doing a great job. Yes. And I'm surprised we haven't gotten to this yet, really. Um, Andy Miller. Are you related to Andy Miller? I do not think so. Okay. He's a friend of mine on Facebook. A I Facebook friend. I might be friends with him, too, because that sounds familiar. Okay. He says, what do you think of Christian Casanova signing with NXT? And do you think they will sign any more New England talent? First, I got to say is I can't believe and I apologize, Christian, that I didn't open the show with that. You know what I mean? I should have. But go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm representing his shirt. Yes. So, you know, I'm, I'm with him to the fullest. Hey, don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> I got I, I to gotta try to keep the number one fan thing alive. Right. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a big fan of those guys, too. So you must have been so excited as I was. I was excited to see him, you know, finally get to the yeah. aspects of WWE. Yeah. Because he deserves it amazingly. Yeah. And you never know how long it's going to take someone to get there. Right. You know, Hanson took a long time. Right. Um, Sasha, Kofi, not so much. Dijak, not so much. Those guys got signed fairly quick. Yeah, he was in and out. I was like, what happened? Yeah, Tommaso was in and then out, you know, until he finally got back in, you know, with the WWE. When he when he finally got in and they re fully ran with him and he was the most unstoppable heel. Right. That was a chamber that I wanted to see. Right. Back on the Indies when he was the psycho killer. Yep. And he was, to me, he's one of the best uh, wrestlers to ever be in, a, in NXT. Oh, I, I agree. 
Definitely. He calls himself the daddy of NXT now. Well, he should because of that hairline there on the top of his head as he's got like nine. He's got like Hulk Hogan hair. Um, yeah, but Christian, back to Christian. Um, yeah. Amazing talent. Uh, when he started out, he was um, Thriller. The Thriller yep, yep. of New England. That's Christian Casanova. Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you answered what I was thinking. I was like, I knew he was called something yep. before during that gimmick. He was called the Thriller. Yes, and he still keeps one of his moves, the Dirty Diana. Yeah. From when, you know, because he named his stuff the Michael Jackson stuff, you know. But he could moonwalk. I mean, nothing but nothing, but he pulled it off and he did a really good job. He did. He really did. Um, and then the Killanova stuff. Okay. Or even before that, even, you know what I mean? Just the kid would not only work for Chaotic, he was working at, um, at Liberty States. Yeah. He was working at, um, oh God, what, Lucky Pro. Mm -hmm. He was working everywhere that pretty much, I don't know how much he worked for, um, for Top Rope. But I know he would go down to the XWA shows on Thursday nights, yep. that $5 throwdown thing, you know? Um, he's been working hard at his craft. And when, ev when the world shut down kind of in March yeah. of last year, um, he really took it to himself to work harder. So when they, it came back, he would be better. Not everyone's going to do that. No. But he did, and it paid off tenfold. Oh, yeah, it did. You know? And I just, for me, I just hope they kind of keep his name the same on NXT. Yeah, but either too. way, you know, he deserves it. It's a great name. It's, but it's like, I don't know, man. If, if it came down to like, if Vince McMahon said, you know what I mean? Um, you can, uh, you know, you can keep the name, but I'm trademarking it. True. Well, do it, dude. I, yeah. I don't know. Or, you know, I don't know. Look. I'm I'm benefit for I'm be beneficial right. for it. You know, I'm benefit, but you know, we, we've seen wrestlers go on there and then we see what the hell happened to him. Right. But, you know, rolling the dice, a lot of New England guys, you know, get get lucky and get, you know, stuff that sticks too. Yeah. Because they can do what makes them them. Yep, absolutely. I can't wait to see what's next for for him. Thursday night at Reloaded Chaotix uh, online show on Twitch, the main event. Tripolicious versus Christian Casanova. I saw it today. I can't believe that's happening. I'm still, I'm, I'm still heartbroken over them breaking up. It's insane. Me too. Um, it's funny how you said that you're broken up over it because I, like I told you, I think off here that Chase told me afterwards because I asked them, how come I can't see the first couple episodes on Twitch? I guess after a couple weeks, they go off Twitch and new ones come on, but he put them up on YouTube and he shared it with me. I finally saw it. Not happy, Tripolicious, man. Really, not happy. I, got, I can't believe it. And did you see Royce Bishop's appearance on Dan's show last week? Let Freedom Ring? I did not see, but I, I'm, I'm going to catch up on it. I'll listen to it tomorrow. Yeah. Well, Royce Bishop doesn't wrestle anymore. He didn't say it's over 100%, but he is not wrestling right now. I was wondering yeah. why he wasn't on, on yeah. um, Chaotic Reloaded for yeah. a while. He has not said the retired word. He even said he most likely will come back some at some point, yeah. which will be great. Yeah. You know? Oh. Um, love to see him and Christian. And I don't know now about trips. You know what I mean? I loved, I, I always wanted to see them kind of move together. I wasn't even thinking NXT. I was thinking more like, you know, Ring of Honor, yeah, yeah, MLW, yeah. something where they all could have stayed together. But obviously, that's not going to happen. Nope. But no. we could, couldn't be happier, right? Exactly. I mean, like you said before, Christian has been working his ass off, you know, since the early days, since yeah. he started with um, the New England Pro Wrestling Academy. He's yep. just always been. I remember when he was ring crew for um, a APW show. This was a while ago. Right. He was ring crew right next to me, you know, watching me. You know, talk crap to one of the uh, Brotherhood members. I think that was the name. Yeah, that was the um, Brotherhood. Oh yeah, I think. Was it Knuckles? <gasps> was um, what's his name? The Masshole. Was he in there? Oh, Mike McCarthy. He might have been. He might have been. Well, he was the one that I was. You know, I was yelling. He sucks. Yeah. He, you know, he was turning. He was turning away from me. I'm holding up a sign, holding it up, trying to get his attention. He finally grabs my sign. Yeah. Rips it up, hands it back to me. And I just gave him the thumbs up. He goes back in the ring. You know, he, he shut me up. I'll tell you, 
Not enough people say how good of a wrestler Mike McCarthy is. Seriously. Guy can work with anybody. Very entertaining. Oh, yeah. I love the punk rock look and, you know what I mean? Which it's not really, a, you could call it his gimmick, but you should have seen before he was the mass hole Mike McCarthy, he was Tommy Knoxville. Kind of like Johnny Knoxville, but like with, with all punk clothes, like chicken pants and just looking all punk rockish, yeah, you yeah. know? But he can work and not enough people say that about him, I think. I've seen him a handful of times yep. on some of the shows where I'd have to like... Like a UFO show. I right, believe. I was just going to say UFO shows. But he, he he's cool. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen a lot of him. Yep. He's like one of the few, like, independent wrestlers from the area yeah. that everybody knows. Yeah. It's like, I know of him. I just right. haven't seen a lot of his matches. Right, right. Well, we'll have to change that when the world opens up. And if I know any shows he's going to be on, we'll go to him. Um. I told you off here that we have been, a couple of segments I try to do now, some different stuff. Um, these things are would you rather, okay? So you're going to pick either one or the other. They're wacky. They're goofy. I don't know how much longer I'm going to keep going with these, but I like the ones I picked today. Okay. Would you rather have to read aloud every word you read or sing everything you say out loud? I think I would rather read every word you're I see. Okay. Because. You 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 want to read aloud every word. Yeah, yes. Okay. Now, would you rather have all dogs try to attack you when they see you or all birds try to attack you when they see you? I for me would rather the birds cuz I think it would be easier for me to get away from a bird than it would be a dog. Yeah. Okay. And I, I've had a few dogs come at me. Yeah. And it's not fun. No, I had one dog when I was like 10 years old. I kicked the, I remember I kicked the dog under the chin. Yeah. And the owner came outside of yelling at me, don't kick my dog. I said, tell your dog to not run at me and I won't kick him. <laughs> dog, I, I had a dog like, looked like the size of a horse. Right. I was, I was at work. I was shopping off a customer car. I hear two, sound, for me, it sounds like lions coming right. from the guy's house, coming down the steps and they're running at me. And I'm, I just, I'm frozen. My, my ride rolled up the windows, locked the doors. The guy's like, don't worry, they're friendly. As they're barking at me, you know, kind of gnawing, but like, right. like grabbing me. And I'm just like shaking. I'm like, take the oh. keys. I don't deal with dogs well, especially when they can pick up on fear. Oh, yeah. And that's what they do too, dogs, you know? Yeah. I, I, I'm not that afraid of dogs. I, I'm a, actually a dog lover. I yeah. mean, whenever I see a dog that I know, you know, it's a friend's dog, I always give it a lot of attention. Um, all right, last one. Would you rather be compelled to high five everyone you meet or be compelled to give wedgies to anyone in a green shirt? I wanted to make sure it wasn't wearing green. I kind of wouldn't want to touch anyone's underwear because I don't know where, you know, if they're clean. So I'd, I'd rather give the um, high five to high everyone. Five, yes. Yeah, that I, I would probably pick that one, too. You know. Um, all right. So there's been some notable graduates from chaotic wrestling pretty much gone to the indies and they worked at some other companies yeah but for the most part these names i want to run by you um i work more chaotic than anybody um it's kind of like the name game we'll move on yeah. to that after so um brian malonis oh brian malonis he's one of the one of the very few men that i've seen his size that can move around the ring like yeah. he can he is unstoppable I was a big pinhead fan when he was around in Chaotic for, for, you know, since I've been around Chaotic. Right, right. He and seeing him on Ring of Honor is just amazing. He's another guy that worked his ass off, and he definitely <laughs> deserves to be where he's at. Absolutely. I'm a big, he's like my favorite wrestler on it. Seriously. He, he's super friendly, too. I, yeah, I, I no, saw, he is. And since he's local to, uh, you know, to the New Hampshire area, I see him when a, once in a while. You know, I snapped a picture with him before. Yeah. He's he's awesome. You know, doesn't, you know, shun fans. Right. No, he doesn't. Not at all. Um, speaking of Malonis, did you used to listen to his podcast at all? The uh, wrestling podcast about nothing? I think a few times, okay. yeah. With Ref Crockett. Yes. He's yes, on yes. an extended hiatus from the wrestling business. Um, did you get to meet Mike Crockett at all? I don't think I met I mean, him, but I chaotic. I've seen I've seen him a, a ton of times, but right. I think the only wrestlers I've sorry only referees I've met before yeah. were I think Tony S, you know Kevin Quinn, yeah, and Dan Dan Tanaka is still one of my favorite refs. Mine too. 
mind you, even though some guys didn't say some nice things not too recently on the show. I was Ooh. very surprised. It was Mav and Sonny. I was like, I can't remember which one said something that wasn't that good. Um, all right. How about uh, Flip Gordon? Flip's another guy that he's just, the way he moved was insane. I remember, I think this was his debut when he entered the chaotic countdown. He was just doing flips, you know, 450s. I, I think I, he was just crazy. Right. Oh, He's yeah. insane. Tremendous talent. Yeah. Um, after he'd done the show with uh, this guy, Dave Padula, a wrestler from Rhode Island, brought him up for me. Yeah. And um, he, somebody else I talked to said that wh why he's so good and so quick, he got so good so fast, was his balance. Yeah. They say they've never seen a high flyer have the balance that he had. And he was a gymnast when he was young. So that obviously must have been the reason for his balance, having such great balance. But I thought it was interesting because I never no one ever said that to me about a high flyer. That he's so good and, and he did it so fast because of his balance. And it makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, it does make for now, because I'm like, how can people do the things that he yeah. did if you know it's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. And do you have his action figure by chance? His wrestling figure? Not action figure. Um, I did not get it yet. I did. But Sorry. But I, um, bro, I don't want to, you know, no, get him mad at you or anything, but I did. It's it's crazy, though, seeing yeah. these guys get their first figures, yeah. though, especially with um, Rising Superstars, I think, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's well, insane. I got Hanson's, too. Yeah, Woman, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. I haven't got Ray Rose yet, but I'm going to. You know, but eventually, eventually, I I'll was get never there. a big figure guy. Like, I don't know if you know this about me, but I used to take merchandise and sell it to shows. It would yeah, be yeah. mostly magazines, DVDs, and loose figures because yeah. I would see like I'd go to a flea market yeah. and see like sixty things at a tub, and the guy would say like two bucks a piece, and I'd be like, I'll give you ninety right now for all of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll save thirty bucks or whatever. So I never was a collector. But as I got older now, I really do want to collect more. Do you have the AEW ones? Yes. See, I remember I asked you, like, you I did. need to get them. I thought, I, I've been looking. I thought it was going to be easier to find. You can't find any. No. Nowadays, you you, uh, you kind of need someone that you know that works in, like, a Walmart, yeah. a Target, so they can tell you the days. So I've been thinking, this, think about this now. I'm thinking about going in the stores and talking. To yeah. some of the people working and see if they're wrestling fans too and tell them, you yeah. know, hey man, here's my phone number. Can yeah. you text me when they when you know they're coming in? And then you'd be there as soon as and you'd get them all. I've tried that a few times. Yeah. And I'm a, my my dad's a witness. I yeah. go there, I'm like, do you have these figures? They always hit me with you're the fifth person to ask, you're the fourth person to ask, you I'm like, do you yeah. have them? You know, because you know. I have the tracker and everything. It's like, it's kind of like a drug addiction. On yeah, these yeah, things. no, I hear you. And now people can see that they flip them. Yeah. Well, it's that's crazy. What, the, the reason why I wanted to do that, and I that you brought that part up, is I didn't want to flip them right away. Yeah. I want to flip them. Yeah. But 25 years from now, whether it's myself flipping them or whoever I leave them to. Do you know what I mean? Because if you look at the LJNs, the big rubber yes. ones that the WWE did, those were like the first ones, okay? And literally, mint condition ones go for a lot of money, it's, you know? It's insane. Did you see the thing with um, with Kurt Hawkins and Brian Myers talking about that they spent $10,000 on a Kamala action figure with the moon, whatever the, I can't remember the, the word. The, the, the moon belly Kamala. Yeah, yeah. yeah. $10,000. I, I had to show my parents that so they won't be upset when I spend, you know, $50 on a figure. I'm like, look at this. That's exactly. $10,000. I, I believe AEW figures are going to be worth a lot of money because they're the first ones of the company. The uh, first exclusive Cody is going for like over $1,000. Yeah, see, that's crazy. That's so how about, you know, and I don't see them failing only because of the money they have. Oh, yeah. And they'll always be making enough money to pay the boys. And Tony Khan loves wrestling. Yeah. Like, he loves it. It's crazy. I, I thought he was just going to be, like, another owner. But Me too. He, he's so, you know, 
I didn't know anything about him until AEW, but he seems like an awesome person. I was gonna say, he seems like a guy who'd wanna have a beer and watch a wrestling show with. Exactly. I like the guy. He's like, he seems like he's like us. You'd never know he had millions and millions of dollars. Right? You'd never know. All right, let's get a couple of these names out real quick. Um, I like to bring this guy up because uh, he came back and wrestled for Ring of Honor just recently. Hurricane John Walters. He was one of the guys of the chaotic alumni that I dreamt to see, and yep. he finally came back a few years ago. Yeah. It was just what I wanted to see. It was amazing. Yeah. He just is one of those talents that he never lost it. He still has it. Sure does. He stays in unbelievable shape 24-7. I mean, you know, everything. he works out. He's just, but I... Great guy. Oh, yeah. When he wrestled for Ring of Honor back in the days when I, I used to talk, when, like his dad would come to some of the shows and I'd have like 45 minute conversation with his dad. John's a great guy. Um, how about um, uh, Anthony Green? Anthony? August Gray. He's another guy that, you know, got signed in. You know, if, if I boo him in the ring, that's, you know, part of the show. But yeah. another guy that I'm extremely happy for. He, he deserves it too. And, you know, I haven't seen a bunch of his matches, but right. I've seen enough where he, he's doing something right. He's doing something great. Yeah, he definitely is. He got right on TV right away, too. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that just tells you right there that the WWE already knows he's polished enough. A lot of people, they won't put on TV right away because they say they got to be TV ready. Right. And they're not. AG, obviously, in their eyes, was TV ready. Um, Josh Briggs, I haven't seen anything out of yet. I haven't But either. he got signed, too. Yeah, he, I think so. he got signed on uh, the same group as uh, Anthony uh, Anthony Green. Yeah, yep. I can't um, wait to see him. Yeah, me too. I really can't. Um, all right, uh, how about we'll go with um, Max Bauer? No? That was just, he left just before I got there, I think. Okay, all right. how about team friendship? Scotty Slade, These guys. Mark Sherman. Those guys are one of my tag team alumni favorites. Great tag team. I was the biggest mark for those guys. Entertaining as anything, too. It, it was crazy. They had the whole crowd going. Yeah. Honestly, I don't, for me personally, I don't think I've seen, like, fans get that glued. Right, right. Like, it was when Sherman won the title, the place rioted almost. It was crazy. It is crazy. Um, and he, I loved his goofiness. How yeah. he played the goofy guy. That, to me... Not enough people do that in wrestling. No. You know what I mean? I, li I like that character. Yeah. All right. Um, Blank versus blank. Okay. Here we go. Brian Malonis or Flip Gordon? Brian Malonis. Okay. Kofi Kingston, Warbeard Hanson. Warbeard Hanson. John Walters. I already know. Die Jack. Die Jack. I knew it. I was there for his first match. Yeah, I hear you. Sasha Banks. Tasha Steeles. I think that would be the toughest one. For me, I'm going to have to go with Shasha Banks. Okay. Christian Casanova. Tripalicious. I'm Trip. going to have to go with Casanova. Of course. Absolutely. I mean, Trips is the OG, but he's not the top talent. No, he's not. And uh, that's thanks to Dan Bolio, who lets me borrow his segment of blank versus blank. All right. Jamie J. Mikowski. Name game, I'm sorry. Jamie's, I, I've talked to him, I think, a few times, but he's, of course, he, he's an amazing guy. I mean, look look what he did for me and my family. Right, right. Him, um, all the guys at Chaotic really helped me, sorry. But, That's um, all right, no, go right ahead. And uh, Brian and uh, Armadeus, all those yep. guys helped me. But nice. Jamie's, but Jamie's, you know, an amazing guy. He's yeah. always friendly to me. Here's one time, one time when I was early <laughs> with Chaotic, I was recording because I didn't know you weren't supposed to record matches. Okay. So, you know, I, I'm just, you know, recording because you know, I didn't know any better. I was recording. All of a sudden, someone comes over and, you know, I see him coming towards me. He's like, you can't be recording the show. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. You know? And I'm like, other than that, he was amazing. And, yeah. and even then, he was just, he was friendly about it. He's right, not like right. some of these guys would be like, you know, turn that crap off. Yeah, I had that. Problem with um that that wasn't a problem because I was just taping yeah. at a Beyond show on those night Thursday night ones oh, that yeah. they were doing and I forgot they were on IWTV so Drew came by and just says you can't I said sorry dude I totally no problem I want you know yeah. I took a couple pictures later and that was it you yeah. know um did you go to the shows in Worcester any of them they were fun huh 
I, I went to a bunch of them on the Sundays. My favorite was the American Rana where they had the barbed wire match. Was Dijak on that one too? Or was it the year after? I think it was the year after. Because I know he definitely main evented one of the Americanas. I so. don't think it was that one. Cause, okay. Because the one I went, I went to one the year before. I think it was Joey Janela. Nice. And um, Matt Real or something like that. But I've seen, I think I watched the one with Dijak online. On yeah. The, on the uh, Beyond Wrestling On Demand. Nice. Have you met Janela? I have not met Janela. Dude, I just met him outside in, Mel in uh, Melrose. Really? Yep. He came walking by and I, no, he was actually, he came out of the building to smoke a cigarette. And yeah. I was coming from my car. And all I said to him was, hey, Joe, can I get a picture? Of course. He comes around. Cool dude. I, same thing happened with Matt Riddle no, in sure. Somerville at, yeah. at a Beyond show. Uh, what do you think about Matt Riddle? He's another guy that's awesome. He, um, I. Oh, Riddle. To, Sorry. He, um, Riddle, I went to get an autograph from him. Yep. And it was a barbed wire wrapped stick. You know, we had it all wrapped up and I'm like. You know, trying not to show people, you know, what I have. I'm like, Riddle, can you sign this? Right, right. He signs it. He's happy about it. He realizes what it is, but he grabs the part where the barbed wire was. Ooh. Thankfully, we wrapped it good enough, but yeah, yeah. he posed with it. He signed it. He was he was amazing. That's cool. He's like, I I, I remember this match. Yeah. He's like, I hope so. You you ran through thumbtacks in that match. Nice. Because when he came out the day, I was the first one asking for a picture. And the poor guy got stopped by like the next 10 people behind me. And he took a picture with all of them. I mean, he, that's how cool he was. I mean, he didn't have to. No. I'm sure he was probably on his way to go get some food or whatever. Maybe they were going to burn. I don't know. Sorry, Ma. Ah, she don't watch the show anyways. Um, Brian Fury. Brian Fury. He is an amazing. He is one of my favorite wrestlers on the Independent. I have like five of them. Yep, yep. Give me a break. He but was one of my favorites when he wrestled. I, it, he was just crazy. Just the matches he could yeah. produce and, you know, the talent he made. But as a person, he's always been cool with me. Yep. You know, w whenever I talk to him, he'd be there. And he actually helped, you know, helped me train during that one day fantasy camp. Yeah, I saw a video when you went over, like, you took the clothesline yeah. over the rope. That was pretty cool. Did you do one with Brandon, too? Were you at any of them? Like, how many did you do? I did one. Just one. So yeah. I think you probably did it before Brandon. I think so, because I remember he did one, and then he, like, joined the school like, yeah, right after and, that. Yeah, and Dan did one with Brandon. Yeah. I think Dan did one before that. Um, he, you know, they asked me. I'm like, I don't mind that. 56 years old, man. I, I already know it. Be the worst thing I could ever do was try to think I could take a couple of bumps at this age. For me, it kicked my ass. Right. I, I can't even take a bump. I, How old are you, by the way? I'm 25. 25. See, so like I said, I'm 56, man. You, you know? You can still I know. go for it. Come huh? on. You can still go for it. Oh, listen, listen. I'm not a wimp or anything like that. I just don't think it would be smart. That's okay, all. Yeah. I just don't think it'd be smart. Um, my mother hates professional wrestling. Really? Yeah, yeah. My dad never, it never bothered my dad because I found out as I got older uh, that his mom was a huge wrestling fan. And he even told me that she took me a couple times when I was just a baby. No kidding. Yeah. That's insane. And the only person in my family that liked wrestling was her and me. That's, That's wild, right? It's crazy. My mom, when I was little, she never liked wrestling either. And she'd like make fun of it. And like, yeah. you're not watching that. You know, that there was a men in their underwear fighting. <laughs> and you know, when I was a kid, I was like, okay. Right. And quickly I'll get into how I got into wrestling. Yeah. I was at my middle school in Hunking Mass. And there was a kid that all I knew about him was that he got held back twice. Right. So he, he would talk to me because, you know, I was sitting at the table and he would explain to me about The Undertaker. Right. How he could roll his eyes in the back of his head, how he's, you know, from the undead. And when I heard that, I just got hooked. I started watching just SmackDown because I, right. I couldn't stay up late on a school night and just got hooked right into it. Nice. Yeah, I, I fell in love and I found it on a Saturday. Just flicking channels. I saw an Indian guy with a headdress. I'm like, Phew. Who's that? What is this? You know? And my mother, she always, she knew I liked it. So she would remind me that I think you're wrestling, even though she hated it. Yeah. But because for an hour or two, and actually there was roller derby back. That's how old I am. There was roller derby on TV after wrestling. Huh. So I used to watch that too. 
Um, right, let's get some more names in here real yeah. quick. Um, Rich Palladino. Oh, Rich, he's my favorite ring announcer ever. He's Me too. An, an, another amazing guy. I just uh, talked to him last week. I bought a wrestling DVD off him. Nice. Amazing guy. Yeah, he is. He was doing the auction things, right? Yeah. You see, yeah, that's pretty cool. Very smart. Very smart. Rich is a smart guy and a great guy. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's amazing. He's, he's one of the guys that I wouldn't mind, you know, talking to. Right, right. I actually just booked him. He's going to be coming back on the show. I can't wait. I'm yep. going to be watching that Thank one, you. definitely. Um, how about uh, Royce Bishop? Royce is another cool guy. Yeah, he is. I actually met him before he joined Killanova. Right. I think you know, uh, Christian introduced me to him. He's like, this is the guy that raps my theme song. Thought that was cool. Finally, when he joined, I was hooked because, you know, right. now he's a Killer Nova guy. Yeah. And I think a year before that, didn't he? You must have been at the show when he came out and sang it for Yeah, us. yeah. That, that was, was that Cole Fury? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I was at that show. I might have been, though. I mean, I don't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, so. All the shows just looped together for me now. Right. All right. We got a little over two minutes, so let's bang out just a couple of names. Okay. Um, Ava Everett. Let's she, bring up some ladies. She... I didn't expect much at the beginning, right. but she blew my mind away with, with how her talent is. Yeah. Her Ava Tega. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. That, and um, I have a feeling she's going to be next going to, you know, greater pastures. I think you, you're probably correct because I'm telling you, man, she's really good. Oh, how yeah. about her former honey partner and one of my favorites, Angel Sinclair? For her, I think a cool story is I think me and her went to the same fantasy camp. Oh, really? I believe so, because I remember seeing her. Right. And then right after that, she was um, the Platinum Honeys with Ava, and she was with Anthony. Those three, during that time, yeah. they were like white fire for, for the crowd. Unbelievable. They really were. They, 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 they really, like, the, the Platinum Honey gimmick was awesome. It helped two people at the same time. Exactly. You know? All right. How about uh, D.L. Hurst? D.L. Hurst. He's another guy where... You know, I've seen the highest rim and I've seen, you know, the lowest, you when know. He broke his leg, right? I Did he do that right in front of you? Pretty much. It was like maybe a few right, feet right. over. It was just when he got up for the moonsault, I looked at, because, you know, a fan like us, we see when the guard wheel's a little bit close. Yeah. When that snapped, that was, a, that was one of the worst injuries I've seen. But when he came back, that was one of the loudest return pops right, right. I've ever heard. I was there when he came back, and you're right, it was. Brandon Locke got a good pop when he came back. Even though it was, yeah. a, heel, it was a heel pop, though, because he jumped over the barrier. All right, we got a little over 30 seconds. How about we just do this last name? Davian, who just got jumped by JT Donner, former tag team partner. Davian, i seen her first match up till now. She is one of the few women that can do it all. Yep. Because we don't see much of that, but now that she could be going for the chaotic title, she is the one where who can make that believable because she can kick anybody's ass. Yep. And I would not be surprised if she was the next one signed. Wouldn't I'm not saying it's got to be, but wouldn't surprise me. It would, it would be insane, and she would definitely deserve it. No doubt. Anthony, thanks for coming on. Thank we'll you. do this again. We'll bring your dad on next time. Peace. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.